Welcome to this ATA Insights webinar. Thank you for your ongoing interest and support of our webinar program. Today's session will begin in two minutes. ATA Insights webinars is an online platform for the dissemination of professional renewable energy knowledge across international borders. Our aim is to democratize access to information, for innovation to spread faster and to make the industry more competitive. And we do this through our online session, open to all our members. Every year we do more than 100 sessions with over 250 speakers, 50,000 attendees from more than 50 countries. To participate in the session today, use the chat on the right hand side to introduce yourself, your company and where you're joining from. Under the screen you will find the Q&A box where you can send your questions for the speakers. We will get to as many as we can today. We're recording this session and we will send you a link to the materials in a few days. Please consider supporting our content creation for the webinar program. Contact us on the email on screen. Well, welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, depending where you're joining today. Uh, my name is Belen Gallego. I am from the ATA Insights team, and I'm here today to moderate this session about optimizing the LCOE, the levelized cost of energy of large PV plants, by installing string inverters. And as you know, the string versus alternate inverter is a conversation that we had for many a year now, and we've uh, we've learned how to become more efficient, you know, both with central inverters and with string inverters. And depending on your project and depending on what you are doing, chances are that string inverters may work better for you. As the technology continues to evolve, we bring you the latest uh, from the experts in the field that are going to be telling you today how you can get more you know, by using uh, the extra inverted equipment. And this is very important because as you know, the press, the LCOE of PV has constantly uh, gone down. So you have to make sure that you stay competitive by adding like percentages of value to your project. So let me introduce today, the people who are going to be telling you all about these specific projects and sting inverters. First, I'd like to uh, ask Jorge to please introduce yourself so that we can get to know you a little bit better. Hi everyone, my name is Jorge Alex. I'm the engineering manager of Webotech Renewables. Um, I'm here just to provide the, the EPC contract or review about this topic. Excellent, thank you very much, Jorge. Next, I'd like to, uh, to ask the main man to introduce himself. Please, Alvaro, could you introduce yourself so that people can get to near you? Absolutely, thank you very much, Belen. Uh, this is uh, Alvaro Sanon, and I am the, the EMEA, the technical director for uh, utility projects. Uh, basically, I uh, give uh, support uh, to big uh, customers, big projects, uh, doing uh, projects uh, in the whole EMEA region. And this, uh, this topic is uh, one that comes out uh, very often in conversations with customers. Uh, you know, why there's advantages in LCOE when considering string inverters versus central, things like that. So we hope uh, the three of us can give you a brief uh, overview today. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Álvaro. And next, I'd like to ask uh, Daniel to please introduce yourself. So thanks a lot, Belen, uh, for the introduction and thanks to everybody for joining today meeting. So I'm the uh, Daniel Hernán from uh, ICMARN, I'm the Technical Solutions Director. And today uh, the intention is to introduce and provide a, a brief view about the importance of the uh, power plant controller, also focus on uh, LCOE uh, optimization. Excellent, thank you very much. So now you know a little bit about Jorge, about Alvaro and about Daniel, who are going to be the speakers and the experts that are going to be telling you today about string inverters. Uh, for everything that you need, you uh, can ask them questions. This is the great thing about webinars, that you get to ask the experts, you know, the questions that you have about your projects. And let me tell you how you ask your questions is that I'm gonna ask you to put them in the Q&A box, you know, at the bottom of the screen, send them through there so that they're easier for us to manage. We are going to take them at the end. However, they've also, our experts, they have said that they're also going to be answering your questions, you know, by text. So you can send them anytime, you know, and, you know, I really would like to ask you to do so because it's it's not very often that you'll get the chance to ask 
three world class experts that you have today about this specific topic. If you are in YouTube, please, if you could just put your question into the, the box and then we'll make sure that we, we bring it into the into the room. So i uh, just like to say before we start, uh, or welcome to everyone you know, who's joined, who's introduced your, uh, yourselves. Please keep introducing yourselves. You know, we love to see who's in there. I can see today we have a lot of people from a lot of different countries. This is a very geographically diverse uh, lot. I mean, we have people from Mozambique, from Germany, from Morocco, from Nigeria, from Tanzania. Uh, from Spain as well, from Zambia, from the UK. So, you know, we just love to see this, you know, because it's quite clear that these issues that we're discussing here today, you know, considering how many solar projects are going on worldwide, you know, these are issues that we can all learn from. You know, we can all be like at the advantage and at the, and, and at the prime of the solutions. So really great. Welcome, everyone. And without further ado, I'm just going to ask Jorge uh, to please share your screen. He's going to be our first presentation. After that, you'll hear from Alvaro. After that, you'll hear from Daniel. And at the very end, we'll take some questions. But as I said, our experts are going to be answering your questions as well, meanwhile. And just one more thing that I wanted to say is that um, we are recording this session. So you're going to have to, you are going to have access both to the recording and also to the materials that you are seeing on screen. So don't worry about it. You're going to be able to review them, okay? Jorge, please, if you can take your mute and please go for it. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, let me just briefly introduce Grupo Tech. <clears throat> we are an EPC contractor and we, we are been developing and constructing uh, uh, solar projects for utility scale for the last 20 years. We already have more than one gigawatt of power in more than 80 plants, and we have been uh, EPC projects in, in, in more than 10, 10 different countries. Okay, just to provide a slight overview. As I said before, the, the, my, my presentation is going to be related with the uh, LCOE in terms of the EPC contractor. What can an EPC contractor do to improve this LCOE? First of all, I would like to, to briefly mention why we are talking so much about LCOE. LCOE is a parameter that allows investors to compare different projects and verify which is the best performing in terms of uh, quality and energy yield and cost. So, so this is why it's so important because it allows this easy comparison. Secondly, I would like to uh, mention the, that the LCOE, we, we usually speak about LCOE just in the construction phase, but we need to take into account for this LCOE, the complete cycle of the project. Uh, a photovoltaic project uh, takes really long, maybe three, four years, and it starts with the development. After that, you continue with the financing in order to be able to construct it. The EPC phases, the engineering, procurement, and construction follows, and finally the operation and maintenance. And we need to overview all this all this cycle and assure that all the partners and the stakeholders that are uh, participating in all these phases are aligned for the very same purpose of reducing the LCO. Um, we we recommend to reduce the number of stakeholders because. As much we re we reduce this, is 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 easy easier that we align them. Uh, for example, if we are developing or a company is developing, their their focus might not be in reducing LCOE, but in make easier their development. They will not improve the design at these phases because they are mainly trying to make it easier their their job. Uh, also, if, if we are a construction, a pure construction company, we want to reduce capex because it's what we are involved in, without taking maybe into account the long term of operation of the plant and affecting the operation and maintenance cost. So we strongly re recommend to reduce the number of stakeholders, and this will provide a better alignment in the in this uh, purpose of reducing LCOE. And just to, to focus that in the development, because this is the great forgotten in the LCOE. We just try to improve the LCOE 
once the development is already done. And this reduce a lot what we can do in order to, to, to improve this LCOE. Let, let me show uh, more in detail this, this development. The, the development phase can impact in CAPEX about 5 to 15%. So it's a relevant uh, phase of the project that we need to, to consider. And also can impact in yield in a range between 2 and 5%. Okay. Our recommendation here is that in the development phase, we need to analyze a number of different scenarios. For example, the DCAC ratio, we need to try to verify different ACDC ratios, getting the, the one who provides the sweet point in terms of LCOE. We need also to, to test different pitches, different uh, height of the, of the structure, in order to, well, with the bifacial models, we need to verify also the, the gains. We need also to test different main equipments, different models, different structures that will allow us to improve this. Okay. I, I would like for this specific uh, webinar also mention about the inverter selection. The, as, as I mentioned before, the selection of the equipment is really important in the LCOE. And in most cases, this is fixed already at the development phase because some authorities don't allow easily change, for example, from central to string inverters or vice versa. So it's something we need to consider in this uh, analysis, in this scenario analysis. And here I, I want to, the, to show briefly one some of the advantages and disadvantages of the stream inverters and central inverters. Okay. In terms of stream inverters, their advantages are that they are more modular and they provide more redundancy because we have much more uh, equipment, we have much more inverters. So we have a number of, uh, if an inverter fails, the quantity of power that they're failing are usually lower and this, uh, the, the, the stream inverters has also usually a multi MPPT capability. So we are having between two, two and five strings in each MPPT compared with a central inverter with hundreds of uh, strings in each MPPT. And the serv serviceability of the, the stream inverters are much easier. We just need to replace it with a non -pro non uh, dedicated personal and it's easy to replace and easy to bring it back to operation. And these are these are the, the cons the, the, that we have in the central inverters. They they're half fixed power steps. They they usually have a single MPPT for all this, the inverter, and we depend on the service of the inverter manufacturer in order to repair or or, or uh, bring the, the inverter uh, back on operation, okay? In terms of the central inverters, their advantages are that usually the capex is lower when we are installing central inverters because we have bigger equipment with uh, lower cost per megawatt. The control and the response time in terms of uh, PPC and in terms of read requirements are usually simple because we have less equipment to control. And this also provides some advantages in terms of hybrid uh, battery storage systems. When we want to bring uh, solar photovoltaic and mix it with batteries, this is easier with central inverters. Usually the cable costs are lower. Also there, there are, this is not, this is quite project dependent. And because we have less components per megawatt, usually we have a higher reliability. And the, this again, that, that are the cons of the stream inverters. We usually have a higher capex, the control is more challenging, the cable costs are usually slightly higher, and the reliability is suspected to be lower, although the figures are not so clear on, on that. Just to summarize here, what will be my recommendation in terms of selecting one stream inverter and, or one central inverter. I would recommend always using a stream inverter if we have 
a site with a lot, a, a very sloppy site with a lot of uh, hills and, and valleys and, and with a dif difficult topography because the multi MPPT will help a lot to improve the yield on these sites. I will also recommend a string inverters where we are building projects in remote sites or, or sites where the, the inverter manufacturer has not uh, prime operational operational maintenance services because we can easily replace uh, putting the, the inverters on operation when some damage or when something happens. And the, in the other way around, I would recommend central inverters for big sites with really flat sites where no the multi MPPT capabilities are not going to be relevant and where the capex is really the key aspect in the design. Okay. Okay. We we go now in the in this LCOE uh, road into the design. What are the design and procurement keys? These these phases are impacting the in the next phases in the construction. Uh, a very good design and very good procurement procurement will allow uh, for reduction of errors in the construction and for time reduction, and in the operational maintenance, increasing the yield and reducing the cost of, of operation and maintenance, okay? How we can improve this, these phases? So it's very important to optimize the design of the PV plant. We, we need to perform a detailed design. We recommend to bring EPC contractors that perform their own engineering and the, the, that this engineering is, uh, feed, has feedback from the operational phases because in that way, the design will be optimized. And we recommend continuous improvement in and the research and development also in the in the phase of design. We select EPC contractors that really focus on this continuous improvement. We have uh, I don't know you know the, the you have ever heard about the marginal gains term. We have marginal gains in about 35% of the cost. That means that we can optimize about 30 five percent of the cost uh, using this design and the procurement and um, well if you have ever heard about sir dave Bresford, was uh, the manager of the english uh, cycling team who was uh, very focused on this marginal gain and, and really uh, makes this term really available to the to the public because by mi minor and small but continuous and in, in a lot of uh, fields, there's improvement. He makes a great uh, ex success of the cycling team. Okay. And I would like to mention in, in, this, uh, in this design about the stream length, because it's uh, something that, that uh, has a lot of, uh, that there are a lot of people talking about. The stream length is a rig risk related consideration is we are trying to predict whether what is really difficult which is really difficult the standards the ac standards provide a, a straight line approximation for this but the the calculation are really very conservative because they use the lowest daily temperature that is usually produced at night when the, no radiation is produced so the models are not in operation they consider that the cell temperature is equal to the ambient temperature and at the same time we have a huge irradiation of as 1000 watts per square meter and it ignores that some or most of the equipment manufacturers warranty, warranty uh, temporary voltages overpass so we can um, in in some we can assume some risk in these overpasses as a conclusion the IEC is strongly and very unnecessarily conservative. In addition, because open circuit voltage, that is the parameter who is driving the string length, is rarely seen in the photovoltaic plant. We usually operate at lower voltages at the, at the voltage at, at where the MPPT is, is uh, in operation. And we only see open circuit voltage when there's any problem in the inverters. That is something really rare. But sure recommend, Urupotec recommends, and, and I, we our understanding of the, the better approach. 
is to provide uh, engineering analysis that allows for overpassing this limit and this straightforward uh, calculation. Considering the pair irradiation and temperatures in the analysis, we need to consider that uh, uh, the minimum temperatures never are, are being produced at 1,000 watts per square meter, allowing also to consider that the cell is hit by the irradiation, although we need to consider that maybe in the morning, some in, in areas where frost is generated, we need to take this into consideration in the calculation. And also we can consider, in order to evaluate the risk, that the, the equipment manufacturers allow these overpasses. With this into consideration, we can optimize CAPEX, getting a, the optimum string length for the, for, the, for the strings and for the project. And at the same time, we can increase the yield, having the maximum efficiency of the strings because most of the inverters has a higher performance at higher voltages. The cable losses are reduced when we have higher voltages, so we are improving yield. Okay. Just for summarizing the key ideas of this topic, we have to consider the overall cycle in the in the, the LCOE of the of the plan. We should try to reduce the stakeholders to assure everyone is aligned in the same purpose. We have to take very deeply into account the development phase because as long as the project advanced, it's, it's more difficult to improve the LCOE, and we have to take into account the design and procurement, optimizing design, and performing continuous improvement of, of this design and on the, on the equipment you are selecting. Okay, thank you very much for, for this. I hope this is interesting for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jorge, for going into detail and to what things to consider. Uh, if I can ask you to stop sharing the screen. Let me, I can help you. Excellent. So uh, we've already had a few questions, you know, keep them coming. As you've seen, Alvaro has been answering them, uh, but I will have time for them a little bit later on. So Alvaro, you are next. So if you want to prepare your presentation and get it ready. And just a reminder that we are recording and you'll have access to the materials and also to, to the video later and to keep sending your questions. All right, Alvaro, you are good. We can see your screen perfectly. So go right ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Jorge, for the, for the great explanation. That was uh, very helpful and it's a good segue for uh, my introduction. Uh, I'm going to give um, an overview from the perspective of an inverter supplier. Um, as you saw from uh, Jorge's presentation, the, the inverter selection has a big impact. So uh, I'm just going to give uh, some hints. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time. I could be talking about this topic, about this topic for hours, but uh, I'm just going to give you a few hints. Uh, let's move ahead with the presentation. I just have a couple of slides about uh, our company uh, for those of you that uh, you still don't know Goodwe, but then uh, let's get to the topic uh, very quickly. So uh, Goodwe is, uh, is an um, inverter uh, supplier from, from China uh, based in uh, Suzhou, uh, next to Shanghai. Um, you can uh, see in the, in the bottom of the screen uh, our revenue growth in the past, um, what is it, six years. Um, at the beginning, um, uh, it, uh, it, take the, it took a bit of, of time to take uh, momentum, but uh, right now we are at the sweet moment. As you can see, we are more than doubling uh, the, our revenue uh, year after year. And uh, by the way, just to mention, uh, Goodwe is a public uh, listed company in the Shanghai Stock Exchange. And uh, some numbers about the size of our company, just uh, want, want to mention that we are only focused on uh, string inverters uh, for residential CNI and uh, utility projects. Uh, today, we're just gonna talk about the utility inverters, uh, but uh, you see we have a total of more than 4,000 employees uh, worldwide, um, out of which uh, more than 700 are dedicated in, uh, in R&D. Uh, very important to mention that the number of overseas employees and uh, more than 100. Um, and it's important to mention that the revenue that you see in the screen, uh, uh, <clears throat> around 40% comes from the from the EMEA region where I am based. So this is a region that it's really um, growing very fast. Um, and just uh, to give you an idea about uh, where are we located. So basically we're located in every region in the world, every continent. Um, as I said, our headquarters are based in Suzhou, uh, in Shanghai area. Uh, but we have branches uh, all over the world. Um, we are about to, to open the, the branch in Spain and where I'm located. 
in, in, in a couple of weeks. Actually, the, the company is uh, already formed. Uh, sales and services, uh, anywhere in the world where we have customers and we have projects, that we're going to have a sales or, and or service center. Uh, two R&D centers, uh, well, one, as I said, in Suzhou, in our headquarters next to Shanghai, and the other one in Shenzhen next to Hong Kong, let's say. And uh, we manufacture our inverters into manufacturing facilities, uh, both uh, in the Shanghai area. And then uh, let's get to the topic. Uh, the string inverter uh, topology is, uh, is, um, is, is, of course, different uh, from a central inverter topology. Uh, in the way that uh, the modules, as you can see here, are directly connected uh, to the string inverters because the DC box is already incorporated in the in the inverter. After that, uh, we connect uh, the inverters directly to the to the transformer stations that we can supply. Uh, we don't need um, AC boxes to do this uh, aggregation of inverters on the AC side. Um, right now, we are working with a uh, with an optimum size of transformer station of uh, seven MBAs, but uh, we can be flexible. Of course, we have. 3.5, 7, but uh, you, we can adapt uh, the sizes. Uh, sometimes customers ask for 5 MVAs, we can provide it. Um, and then in every transformer station, uh, we're going to have our communication box, uh, the SCB 3000. And uh, very soon, we're going to release a new a new one. Uh, probably at the beginning of next year, it's called, going to be called the SCU 3000. This is not the topic of this uh, webinar to describe the, the, the differences. But the, the point here is that this communication box is going to, to interface with the PPC uh, and the SCADA. And this is why, uh, you know, the, Daniel from Isemaren as a PPC SCADA supplier, he's going to give us a, his overview. Uh, but let's uh, focus today on the, on the inverters uh, due to the time constraints. Um, here's an overview of the main uh, features of our inverter. Uh, it's important to mention that we have uh, two, well, two, four different models. Uh, let's call two for now, uh, the 250K and the 250KN, uh, Kilo November. Main differences is that the K version is uh, intended for modules that uh, do not have a very high current. So typically this is uh, modules with uh, 182 millimeter wafers, uh, whereas the KN version is intended for, uh, to, you know, for larger uh, current modules. So let's say typically the bifacial modules that they have more than 15 amps, let's say, of, uh, of output current. Um, the K version has uh, 12 MPPTs and 24 inputs, so two strings per MPPT, whereas the KN version has uh, 18 inputs and six MPPTs. And this is important to mention in terms of LCOE. Uh, actually, Jorge uh, explained that uh, briefly during his presentation, the number of MPPTs this is an advantage as compared to central inverters because uh, you're going to be able uh, to reduce your mismatch losses, especially if you are considering by facial inverters uh, uh, modules, uh, sorry, uh, where you have also mismatch losses on the on the rear end. Uh, so typically, we are seeing uh, improvements in uh, mismatch losses uh, around uh, zero point five to one percent uh, in yield when uh, well or reduction in losses when working with monofacial modules. With by facial modules, that number increases to to between one and two percent. I mean, it depends on the site and the conditions. Of course, this is a topic that we talk with our customers. Um, another important feature, uh, of course, we have a very high efficiency, a very high conversion efficiency, but uh, important to mention, and it's not uh, stated here, is the dynamic uh, efficiency, which is uh, how well, represents how fast is our uh, algorithm or our MPPTs in finding the, the MPPT once it has been lost, let's say when the cloud passes and it loses the MPPT. So in that regard, we have a very high dynamic MPPT efficiency of 99.8, uh, 99.9%, .9%, 99 which also greatly impacts on the LCOE, on the energy yield. Um, our inverters work in 1,500 volt DC, 800, 800 volt AC. This is kind of like a standard in the, in the string inverters. Very important, that helps a lot uh, in the, in the, well, in CAPEX and especially in O&M, the power line communication. So, so we can transmit the inverter data directly through the power cables. I'm going to cover that uh, later. Uh, in terms of commissioning, there are several options. Uh, you can do it with uh, the Bluetooth dongle that is uh, provided with the inverters. Uh, this is to do it uh, just in front of the inverter. But uh, when uh, you are working in a utility scale project, uh, you are not going to do it inverter by inverter. So you're going to do it uh, with our data logger. Uh, it's called the EC logger. You're going to see that later also. Um, we also have a, a smart uh, fan cooling design. Um, uh, several other features like PID recovery. We also have uh, another one called anti-PID. So there's uh, 
different alternatives depending on what type of modules you are using, what type of ambient conditions. So we can recommend one or the other. Um, IV curve uh, diagnosis, very important uh, in terms of uh, O&M uh, to identify faults in the, in the, in the modules. Uh, we also have a reactive power at night, uh, so you don't have to, to use a compensators uh, to, to get uh, the reactive power at night when it is requested. Uh, very important, we have a late uh, temperature derating um, because our inverter doesn't apply derating up to 40 degrees. So talking about the 250K or KN inverter, that means that our inverter is going to provide 250 kilowatts up to 40 degrees. So as uh, when comparing that uh, with other inverters in the market, uh, this means that uh, you, because they apply the rating uh, before 40 degrees, it means that it's going to help you in your capex because uh, you are going to need uh, less inverters to comply with the grid requirements. Um, and again, uh, um, you know, if uh, any of you guys want to talk uh, more about uh, some of these topics, uh, you can always contact me after this, uh, this webinar. Uh, very extensive uh, protective features. Uh, and a very easy installation at O&M. As Jorge was uh, talking before, it's uh, just an easy replacement. Uh, very um, basic, uh, let's say, uh, O&M, um, because uh, you, you, basically there's no O&M on the inverter, uh, preventive maintenance, uh, just some uh, visual inspection. There's no uh, visual damage. Uh, you need to retorque the, the terminals and so on. So very simple. Um, so here you have, uh, overview of a data sheet. I'm not going to cover this data sheet uh, due to the, to, to the time constraints. But uh, what I want to mention here is that we have four models, uh, two K versions, 225 and 250, and then two KN versions, 225 and 250 as well. Um, so what are the main differences in terms of sizing? Um, Jorge explained that when he was talking about the PV sizing. Uh, the K version, uh, remember that has two strings per MPPT. Uh, the maximum allowed current per MPPT is 30 amps. So this means uh, when you divide it by two strings, so 15 amps per string, if you put two strings per MPPT. In the KN version, uh, since we have uh, three MPPTs and a limit, uh, sorry, three strings per MPPT and a limitation of 60 amps, it means 20 amps per, um, per string. So for this is for 20 amp uh, modules, so the, the large current modules. Uh, but what happens if we exceed uh, 15 amps or 20 amps? Uh, the short answer is nothing. The inverter will not break, um, but it will limit uh, the, your production. Uh, how much? It depends on how aggressive you want to be. And let me put an example. Uh, here in the graph on the right, uh, you have uh, uh, the point number one, current and voltage. Assume this is the, the, the maximum power point, the optimal one. Uh, but you are using with the K version modules that are 15.3 uh, amps. Remember that the limitation is 15 amps per string. What's going to happen? The inverter is going to limit the input current to 15 amps. And at the same time, it's going to increase slightly the voltage. So it's going to move the operating point to the, to the point number two in the screen in, in blue. So that will mean uh, that you will have uh, some um, power losses. Um, not by by much because in this case we're talking from 15 amps to 15.3 but remember that you are not working in the maximum power point you will be operating in another point which is not the optimum so um if uh if you want to use um this inverter both with the 15.3 amp module uh, you have to know that you're going to have some losses but at the end of the life uh, after 20 years or 10 10 years uh you know the modules are going to degrade the, the output current is not going to be 15.3 it's going to decrease so maybe you're in a good situation in the next years so that's something that you need to consider and we need to talk uh, when uh, selecting the, uh, the inverter for your modules um some uh, considerations about the inverter here you have a uh, side view bottom view etc talking about the dc connections uh, we provide uh, the terminals, uh, the DC terminals. Uh, so this is something that you can save in terms of CAPEX. Uh, we use MC4 connectors from Stowley. Uh, so we provide <clears throat> both the male and female connectors. So the, the, the ones that go in the inverter and the ones that you need to install in the cables to do the connection. Um, it, it, they are cheap, of course, they are just a few dollars, but consider that you have uh, 24 strings uh, you need a male and female, and you have uh, typically hundreds of uh, string inverters because we're talking about utility projects. So that counts for uh, lots of a uh, lot of money uh, in the end. Um, the connectors are intended for a maximum uh, cable uh, cross section of six millimeters squared. 
However, if you want to use larger connector, larger cable, uh, you can buy the, the 10 millimeter square connector that are completely compatible with the ones that are in the inverter. Okay? We don't provide them, but uh, you are uh, more than welcome to, to buy them uh, from your side. In terms of uh, AC connections here, just to mention that we allow uh, single core cables and multi-core cables. Very important, uh, you, uh, well, the, the inverter is designed to work in an IT grid, means a floating AC uh, topology with three phases, phase A, B, and C, and then a protective earth, which is just the, a short cable typically from the, from the inverter and closer to a metal structure. Uh, and in that end, uh, you can save uh, the neutral cable and the, the grounding cable that go to the transformer station. So that's a uh, big savings in terms of CAPEX. Um, and then the maximum uh, allowed uh, cross-section in, in our inverters is uh, 400 millimeter squares. And then finally, in terms of communications, uh, you have uh, two options. Uh, one is to use uh, RS-485, uh, but uh, for utility scale projects, it's more typical to use the PLC, power line communications, meaning that uh, the, uh, the, the monitoring data and control data as well, they uh, travel uh, through the AC lines, the AC cables, so you don't need extra uh, cable uh, for monitoring. So that's another um, consideration in terms of CAPEX and actually in terms of uh, operational maintenance, because we know RS-485 cable gives a lot of problem on site. Um, let me let me move on because I think I'm not, not okay with timing control right now. Uh, so just to mention PLC requires our, uh, um, our communication box, SCB-3000 and a transformer. And uh, it, in, in theory can go up to 1000 meter distance. So this is uh, the, the maximum limitation. Uh, one important topic, um, um, Jorge mentioned that in his presentation, uh, string inverters don't require DC boxes. Uh, so this is a, a big impact on your CAPEX. Uh, DC box could be I don't know, for $500 and maybe more, depending on if you, when you want string level monitoring could be 800. But very important to keep in mind, especially when talking about uh, bifacial modules, uh, that the, the size of the DC box uh, cannot be as typically 20, 24 string inputs. And, and I'm going to give an example of why. Uh, here we have an example on the top uh, with uh, Goodwill inverters. Uh, uh, the inverter is always limiting the output current to 180.5 amps. So this is, a, no matter what happens, this is going to be always your maximum output current. So your dimensioning of the AC cables need to be based on that value. And then uh, taking a look at the bottom uh, view uh, for a typical central inverter where you have a DC combiner box, in this case, uh, let's consider 16 in one. Uh, in that case, uh, you, you need to, well, you, you need to multiply the number of strings, but the, by the uh, IMP current of the module, 17.29 in this example, times the bifacial gain, uh, in this case, uh, let's assume uh, 10%. So, in, in your calculations, you need to consider a maximum current of 304.3. So how does this translate in terms of cabling cost and trenching? Uh, on the top, you have what we, what we have uh, seen right now. We need to make a, a several considerations. Uh, this is basically for the, for the uh, ampacity calculation. So uh, this, um, this data that you see here is just to, to calculate the correction factors from the IC uh, 60364. Uh, but the most important is that in this example, we are going to consider a maximum voltage drop from the inverter to the transformer station or from the DC combiner box to the invert, central inverter of 1%. When you do the calculation, you end up with, uh, in the case of Woodwick, that you're going to need, uh, well, three cables for the, each phase of 400 millimeters square. But for the, the DC combiner box output, uh, you have uh, two options. So one of them is to use uh, 630 millimeter square cable, so one for the positive and the negative. Uh, and the other one, because 630 millimeter square is uh, very difficult to work with in the field, uh, no one will tell you that they would like to use this cable. You can use uh, two cables per uh, polarity, let's say for the two for the positive and two for the negative. In this case, the cross section will reduce to 240. But in that case, the cost of your cables will increase, uh, you will need more trenches. So in the end, your capex will increase. So this is a special case of uh, bifacial modules. Um, and just to finalize, uh, this is an overview of our solution uh, going from the inverter uh, to the transformer station. Uh, as you can see here, from the inverter to the transformer, we use PLC communications. In the transformer itself, we install our uh, combiner box, SCB monitoring box, sorry, SCB 3000. 
And from that, uh, you go to the, uh, with fiber optic, uh, typically to, to the, the, the PPC, which is the master that is going to control the, the, the SCBs. Uh, just a hint uh, that we can, uh, about our uh, medium voltage station, we can still provide it uh, up to seven MVAs, uh, fully configurable. Uh, so just let us know on your needs on your project and we can support you with, uh, with these needs. Um, and just to finalize, this is a, a single line diagram of how everything is connected from the inverters to the, to the transformer station, which has three compartments, low voltage switch gear, transformer, and the medium voltage. Um, the last slide, and this is a good introduction for Daniel, is going to talk about the PPC. Uh, here you have our SCB 3000 box uh, that uh, where all the inverters are connected. Uh, well, not all the inverters, the inverters associated to each block. And then you, you create a fiber optic uh, ring, uh, and then you close it at the top uh, with the PPC uh, that in this case well, it could be from, uh, from ISMRM in this case. So uh, I will leave it to you, Daniel, uh, Belen, you want to make an introduction? Thank you very much, Alvaro. A lot of detail that you have seen there and a lot of follow-up questions for you, Alvaro, about the very specificities and... of the system. Uh, this is not easy to, you know, to catch, so you guys ask the questions that you need to ask. You will have access to recordings in the presentation, so a question that you just asked, so you can check it again, okay? And Daniel, good on you to go ahead and prepare your presentation. If you just wanna, okay, perfect. We can see it perfectly, so go right ahead. Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, Belen. And also, uh, I would like thanks to uh, Jorge and Alvaro for such uh, quite interesting uh, presentations. I, 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 want, I would like to finish uh, this, uh, this webinar uh, from the uh, controller, plant controller point of view. So uh, um, first of all, we have a, a quite brief presentation of what we do uh, in SMR. We are an engineering and consultancy uh, company, uh, and we are involved in the, uh, all the phases of the uh, power plant development, since uh, feasibility and development till the operation and smartly. So um, we are users of our own solutions, apart from uh, selling to third parties. So uh, from uh, our business line, based on our PPC, SCADA, so portfolio management uh, in an automatic way, uh, we um, have a uh, complete um, platform solution and, and it's uh, open and, and hybrid. So it uh, noted that, that open solutions helps to, to, to control and monitorize uh, heterogeneous and hybrid solution from the different suppliers. Um, we also have uh, solutions for management and, and, and uh, automatic control uh, since a uh, plan for point of view to a portfolio. And we act as integrators, okay, for with different partners, suppliers, and manufacturers. And specifically, uh, we have a wide experience with string inverters uh, from medium scale to large scale. Uh, PV plants in, in plants of, uh, higher than uh, 200 megawatts. So uh, focus uh, on on the uh, on the, uh, the, the the main topic for today webinar LCOE the levelized cost of energy. Um, my colleagues has already introduced uh, what is uh, the, the meaning of these uh, figures in order to compare different solutions uh, based on different technologies. But from uh, the power plant controller perspective, we want to, to focus how to reduce the net present value of the total cost over the lifetime. And for that, the PPC has a key role as a power plant brain. Okay. So um, I'm going to divide this talk into five main uh, indicators of performance uh, from uh, the power plant controller. First of all, uh, I, I will introduce some concepts about observability. Later on, uh, I will focus on uh, controllability, reliability, maintainability, and availability. So from observability point of view, um, it's the ability to measure uh, the internal states of a system uh, by examining uh, the outputs. So which is, uh, from, from controller for the view, we have to, to assure that all PV plan measurements are accessible from using different protocols like modules. 
Also, uh, with the string inverters specifically, uh, they provide easy and easy accurate measurements to the NPPT. Uh, we have it's needed, completely needed, having an accurate power meter with less than 20 samples per second, accuracy less than 10 to 5%, and assured in having a class uh, 0.2s. Uh, it's quite important also having a, a visibility for transients, having a, an adapter logger uh, with circular buffers, having a scala with a stereo DB for, for historical values, knowing a, a long term uh, analysis of the performance and also having real time alarms. So from closed loop perspective, uh, as uh, Albert has previously uh, mentioned, um, in specifically when we work with uh, string inverters, we have a transport delay based on uh, uh, the string inverters allows uh, power line communications, allowing transmission over easy lines at high speed. So uh, the latency is, uh, is, is really low. Uh, according to state of the art signal processing with uh, octagonal frequency division multiplexing and so on, and as you low latency. Nevertheless, this is a part of the uh, of the um, features that should be implemented in the, uh, in, the in the PID in the uh, in the controller and the closed loop uh, uh, control loop. And also, uh, it's recommended having also uh, the derivative term. Uh, for increasing stability, robustness, and help to maximize the internal gain to achieve the, the best performance. Okay, so um, um, during the, 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 the grid code test, this point should be taken into account, but this is not a major issue. Having a really uh, state of the art control loops and controller, it, it, it will be quite easy. And also, um, you can get a chance for high speed communication over PLC. From reliability point of view, um, it's a probability on asset management to perform its desired function under predetermined conditions, okay, in, in a specific amount of time. Okay, so uh, what is recommended? Uh, always, independently of what is um, mandatory, is to pass the complete site after the test based on a specific grid code. Okay, it means uh, P and Q control loops with and without ramps. The power frequency regulation modes, uh, voltage control loops with limitations, power factors, okay, and protection curves. Okay, uh, apart, from, apart from that, uh, we should assure the compatibility uh, with the inverters and so with all the plant devices and uh, the plant uh, design uh, with the 35 dynamic mathematical models. And also, uh, it's quite important having. Um, New features uh, like a ripple control, allowing black start functionalities, having control governors, and for example, in some countries having the automatic power reduction system implemented. And from, from long term point of view, um, this is a, a hot commissioning at the last stages of the construction stage, but the, the plan should be uh, uh, working in a at high performance during a full life cycle, it's around 30 years. So, um, what is needed is uh, what we propose to our customers is uh, uh, allowing having a statistical, statistical characterization of the P plant or the cool plant, including the string inverters, the PPC in operation and static and dynamic regimes. It allows an optimization of the cool regulation plan in the whole life cycle, not just at the end of the construction stage. So it allows uh, improving the overall plant efficiency during the uh, life cycle, allowing a PPC fine tuning. Uh, the anomaly detection and risk with code no compliance was also during the full life cycle. Uh, also, it allows minimizing the LCOE and uh, an ability to compare the behaviors of different plants. Okay, this uh, this is quite interesting. Also, a feature to be implemented. And, and uh, at last point, let me move on to uh, maintainability. Of course, it's a measure of how quickly it, it's quite re related to, to availability too. It's a measure of how quickly the maintenance team can detect an issue, repair it, and then restore the set functionality. And also the availability is assurance that an infrastructure has suitable recovery and uh, protection from system failures. Okay, so having a modular and distributed control uh, and since uh, from the, the PPC point of view, also based on modular design, and also at the plant level, also using the uh, stream inverters, uh, architecture that helps to ensure a, a life, lifetime maintainability and availability, minimizing the LCOE. Yeah. 
So um, typical main features are uh, assuring redundancy at, at all levels, okay, with code swap, the logic control, the network, and metering. Also, having a modular architecture, I'll, I'll, I'll plug and play, as my colleagues have explained before, and speed up the, the, the repair activities. Also, it helps using high quality industrial devices that are available in the market, okay. Uh, having an HMI and web based service terminal for remote maintenance. Okay, and also taking into account since the very beginning of initial phases of the projects, the mean time between failures and also the mean time to repair. So, uh, to conclude, I like to point out some, uh, some points and also um, summarizing uh, based on the Pirelli uh, all advertisement that uh, power is nothing without control okay the, the, the controller the, the, is the one of these the key stones of the plan building okay is one of the cheapest brick but uh, probably the most important one so uh, in the whole life cycle performance uh, depends on applying the state of the art technologies okay for all these kpis that i previously explained so modularity also based on the string vertex contribute to performance improvement Operating condition changes, okay? Uh, the performance depends mainly on a smart design since the very beginning, as uh, Port has explained uh, before, but also the optimization during commissioning phase and fine tuning during operational phase. So they know that, uh, the, the, the fine tuning does not uh, finish uh, uh, at the end of the construction at commissioning phase. It should be managed during the whole operational uh, phase. And, and having a historical data analysis and accurate measurements allow optimization of uh, regulation during, uh, of the whole plant. Uh, and also, a uh, quite important thing is that the change in the plant and, and, and in, the, in the grid it should be careful, analyzed, and studied. Okay, including some cases repeating required site tests. Okay, for avoiding, avoiding uh, risk of major issues like power isolation, for example. Okay, so the, uh, also from controller point of view, the normative, the grid code is changing frequently according to uh, state of the art technologies. So improvements and product design should be flexible enough to comply with most demand requirements, okay, in each country. And finally, and the smart design and development since the very beginning, uh, since the initial project phases, plus an automated one OEM is uh, for us is the key for ensuring a long-term performance and, and, and reducing the LCOE. So thanks a lot. And if you have any question, please ask in the next uh, question round. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, of course, Jorge and Alvaro as well for your presentations. Uh, I think we've heard a lot of technical detail in here, a lot of uh, technical opinions, you know, as to how things work. So I'd like, and you know, what we've also managed to do is answer all of the questions. Well, I haven't, you know, <laughs> you guys have answered all of the questions that you've been sending. So please send more. But in the meanwhile, I'd like to kick off uh, this side of, you know, this part of the of, of the webinar with a question myself. Uh, this is a question for Alvaro. And Alvaro, I'd just like to ask you, you know, like kind of like in a, in a way to summarize a little bit, you know, what we've been discussing during the whole session. What are the three major factors uh, that help string inverters decrease the LCOE uh, of projects with respect to central inverters. So just so that we have that very easy takeaway. Three, three factors, okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Let me give uh, one factor per each component of the LCOE, CAPEX, yield, and OPEX, okay. Uh, CAPEX, uh, I would say, uh, as I explained in the presentation, but uh, to me the most important one is the... Um, the fact that we don't need uh, neither DC boxes nor AC boxes. Uh, DC boxes, as I said, uh, could be you know, $500 and even more if you need the string level monitoring and AC combined boxes are not needed. So when you do the, the your CAPEX analysis, that will have a great impact, so, uh, impact on your CAPEX. Um, in terms of yield, that, this is easy, is the, the multi MPPT functionality. So having hundreds of MPPTs uh, around the field. Uh, it's highly uh, contributing to, 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 to better yields. Uh, typically, as I said, um, between 0.5% or even up to 2%, depending on the project, on the type of modules. Um, and in terms of OPEX, um, actually Jorge explained that in his presentation uh, very well. Uh, you don't need uh, 
Uh, the O&M is much uh, simple, uh, much more simple than uh, with central inverters because uh, preventive maintenance is very basic. As I said, some visual inspection and a few other things. But if one inverter fails, and this is the key point, uh, you, uh, the customer, uh, O&M team, uh, are going to take it down and replace it by a new one that they are going to have in the on site. So typically uh, for a large uh, utility scale projects, there are going to be some spare units on site. Um, it takes half an hour, one hour, two hours to replace an inverter. So your production is going to continue. Um, uh, you're not going to lose any yield. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. Thank you very much, Alvaro. I'd like to ask also a question that has been actually sent in, and you've already answered it, but I think it's worth as exploring here, and it's the matter of like energy storage. If I'm putting a battery in or I'm considering an energy storage, how does it change the calculation in terms of string inverters versus central? So yeah, I don't know who wants to take it. Go maybe, ahead. Yeah. I think, well, yeah. Jorge covered that in his presentation. Maybe he has more experience. Uh, in Woodway, we are still working on a, on a storage solution, so I don't have any, any details on this regard, uh, but it's from my experience with other suppliers there's no um i mean there's no nothing preventing you from using string inverters with uh, battery options um it's a matter of having um the right inverter to do it uh, depending if you need ac coupling dc coupling but it's i don't see any any constraint i don't know Jorge, if you you have experience with that hmm. well you you always have the ac ac link option for both because it's inverter independent but for DC coupling, um, the, there are already manufacturers for central inverters providing this option. And I know more, there are more stream inverters manufacturers working on this, but at present, the, this option is just, uh, just existing in, in the central one. So if you want to go through a DC coupling strategy, um, the stream inverters are not yet, uh, you, you don't have yet this, this option available. Right. I mean, it's not that it's not possible, it's that it has some delays in the market. Right. Okay, thank you. It's just that, you know, as more we see more and more storage, yeah, yeah. you know, being added and sometimes even retrofitted into systems. I think it's just something that is worth, you know, having clear in your mind, you know, whether you're going in this, in this, in this side. All right. Yeah. So but is it coupling is usually the, the most common yes. way to incorporate uh, batteries into, into a project. So you always have this option, even if you have a string or, or central inverters. Is it coupling is always available. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, a couple of questions and then, you know, um, uh, it's time to say goodbye. One is for you, Jorge, um, to evaluate string length, which material that database shall we use? Okay, this, this is really a difficult question because uh, as I said in my presentation, the, the stream length or the open circuit voltage is a, is a matter of risk. You, don't, you cannot, um, you cannot uh, predict the, the, the weather you will have at your project. So you, you need to try to figure out which is the risk you are assuming. Um, the, the best option is always having real data long-term data, uh, very, very short-term data, five minutes or something like that, because in this way you are covering uh, dynamic analysis. You are having a lot of real data that can uh, show what will be the, the reality in the future. If you only have uh, available TMYs or early data, you need to figure out how to reproduce dynamic uh, <clears throat> behaviors you, you will recommend to manipulate this data in order to create a cold year or something like that by reducing the TMY temperatures to the minimum you, you might experience in the site. So you need to work slightly in, the, in this because the key in order to, to determine the open circuit voltage is the, me, the meteor, the, the, the weather data. And, and you can see what ha what happened in the project in the past, but it's very difficult to, to see what, what will happen in the future. Excellent, thank you very much, Jorge. And one question also for the, for Daniel. How do you avoid long-term obsolescence issues uh, to minimize the impact in LCOE? Oh, it's a really good question. So 
from our our experience, based on our experience, uh, one of the key concepts is using a, a commercial and industrial uh, availability available components okay, in the market. Okay, and using uh, program tools and languages that allows a migration because during 30 years of operation of the plant, probably you should change and replace the components for, for new ones during a long period of time. And also the modularity from a point of view of, of inverters, as uh, Jorge and Alvar has explained before, allows uh, a lot for replacing in the future the components with a minor impact on the uh, performance of the plant. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think we've answered most of the questions that you guys have sent and, uh, you know, a few extras even here and there. I just wanted to say, you know, string versus uh, centralized inverter is not an easy question to answer. It depends very much on your project, you know, on, on, on the specifications of such project. But luckily for you, you're not on your own. You know, there are people who have a lot of knowledge that can help you make the right decision, because even though central inverters were almost 100 percent of the market, this is really uh, string inverters have really been making strides and now uh, the market is like balanced you know in terms of the choice and at sometimes for sure you know there'll be situations where central inverters may be the right choice for your project but you don't have to take the decision on your own so these projects are not only for you to get that information they're also for you to put you in touch with the people who can help you resolve this issue you know because the calculations aren't easy as you see you have to take into consideration many things sometimes when they, you make the calculations if you're over for getting a a small factor that might actually add up to be a lot of money. So what I would say is, thank you for attending, you know, to all of you, but also you have the details for Alvaro, you have the details for Jorge and Daniel, get in touch, you know, ask your questions, make sure that you have considered all of the options, you know, when you're making your decision so that once you make your decision is the right one for you. So that was my little like closing speech, but I'd like to also say thank you to Jorge, to Alvaro, of course, and to Daniel for being here today and sharing with us. And to remember that this project, this, 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 this webinars that we put together, they're to share information, but they're also to connect people. So hopefully you'll get in touch with them and keep your discussion going. Thank you very much, Jorge, Alvaro, Daniel, and thank you all. See you next time. Thank you, Valen, everyone.